into town is okay langata road into town is okay um north airport road into town is okay ay ay today mambo simbaya sana we'll find out what's happening on thika super highway hapo the near uh, near near tasca the area formerly known as tasca we'll tell you shortly This is the Situation Room, the home of hard-hitting political commentary and penetrating insights about the state of the nation. This is a talk radio experience like no other. The Situation Room, a place for hard truths, debates, and elevated conversations. The Situation Room, witty, political, engaging, deep, controversial. In the room we have CT Muga, researcher, academic, seasoned political observer, a fountain of wisdom in these politically uncertain times. Ndu Oko, Nigerian by birth, Kenyan by choice, communications expert, pan-Africanist, a truth seeker and believer in people power. And Eric Latin, agent provocateur, the man in the chair, seasoned journalist, news hound, a man who believes in punching up, not down. This is the situation room. My friend, the... why wait when you can loop it? We've been talking about this loop and people wondering, okay, so what is loop? Oh. Oh, 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 we are here with the answers, okay? Here with the answers. Now, imagine you want to do your banking transactions and you don't want to go to the bank. Okay, that is one. There are very many solutions to that. Imagine you want to pay people and you want to access your bank account and pay the people. That is very, very easy, right? Now, also imagine you have some immediate cash needs for your business and you'd like an overdraft facility up to 100,000 shillings. Problem, right? Uh, imagine you'd like a personal loan or a loan of up to 3 million shillings and you'd like to borrow easily without having to have to go to a Shylock. Okay? <laughs> imagine you're running a business and you'd like all these services and also access to a wider market where people can see your goods and services and transact with you and get in touch with you. Imagine all that. Imagine all those things put together into one app. That app no longer becomes an app. It becomes a lifestyle. So in your city. Given that it caters to any need you may have, mm. and it involves cash money yes. to meet these needs, yes. surely lifestyle is part of your life. That's mm. why it's called lifestyle. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. lifestyle. Okay. It's a lifestyle. Whether you're sorting out a loan, whether you're expanding your business, whether you are simply continuing with your business, it is part of your life. Kabisa? Yes. And that's why NCB have said, okay, this is it. Mm. Ours is not an app. Loop is a lifestyle. Go ahead and download Loop today. Go to Play Store or App Store, download Loop, sign up. If you have an account with NCBA, you just put your details. If you don't have an account, it basically just walks you through the journey of creating and opening an account. And thereafter, they give you a lot of support and information. You can even continuously, as you borrow, you are increasing your uh, um, uh, credit limit. You can borrow more, 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 up to 100,000 shillings in overdraft facility, up to 3 million shillings in, in loan. My friend, this is the way to go. It is loop. Why wait? And you can loop it. Okay. Friday the 13th. Many people look at Friday the 13th and like, ah, in fact, there's somebody who said, I'm not leaving the house today. Me, I have experienced things on Friday the 13th before. I know I have experienced with this date. <clears throat> I am not leaving the house. But our guest has left the house. <laughs> and it and well. has come here. And he has come here. <laughs> and he's in the studio. Dr. Kireki Omanua is the president of the Kenya Obstetrical Gynecological Society. He's our guest for the Health Friday Conversation. Dr. Tari, good to see you again. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I'm glad to be here. Karibu sana. Asante sana. Karibu sana. Mm -hmm. You know, your other president, your, your co <laughs> colleague, the other president, is celebrating two years in office today. How many years have you been in office, brother president? Um, uh, three years, going to four years. Yeah, yeah. Going to four years, yeah. Is Slightly there, longer than uh, is there the a other president. Is there a term limit? Yes, there is a term limit, mm -hmm. three years, and then it can be renewable once. So three plus three. Uh, so you're serving a second term? We are having elections next year. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
you and the other guy can have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> okay. As, since you're both presidents. Since you're both presidents. Karibu sana. Asante sana. You're here today for a Health Friday conversation which is about understanding postpartum hemorrhage and why it's a number one killer in women. Correct. Now, when you hear number one killer in women, you're like, okay, wait a minute. This is a big one. We want to hear about it. So first, let us hear the day's proverb from CT. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Our proverbs for the whole of this week have yes. been from the Federal Republic of Somalia. Our neighbors. Here. Mm-hmm. Horn of Africa. Hapa tu. Hapa tu Simba. Yes, hapa hapa. Kisimayo. A beggar and a ruler know people best. A beggar and a ruler know people best. A beggar and a ruler know people best. Yes. Uh, that's a, that's an interesting one. Uh, quite challenging yeah. I would say. <laughs> I thought so too. I would imagine um a beggar let's say somebody on Kuinanga Street or you know or um, you know Moy Avenue mm. um somebody who's been there for some time and usually they have their own spots there mm. and they are sort of a repository of knowledge because of the people they see the actions they see what is happening mm. and um sometimes if, even if there is danger they are a lot easier they say usiende hapo kuna kuna shida mm. so i would think i would think in that in that respect when it comes to the leader um if you were to say that um you have been in a position for some time you know the going ons of um of um of an institution the people who are working there uh, you know the the strengths and the weaknesses of um, the people there so you have all this knowledge which you can apply either positively or also negatively mm-hmm. that's the way i would uh, interpret our uh, today's proverb what do you think it's telling us sorry what do you think the proverb is telling us what's there what i think it's telling us is that knowledge is power that um once you have knowledge you can be able to apply it and you can be able to apply it positively or also negatively unfortunately mm-hmm. and um the beggar who is at the bottom of the pyramid and the leader who is at the top of the pyramid all have different types of information and this information this knowledge can actually be used positively or negatively oh fantastic that's a good one knowledge is power knowledge is power i yes. have some knowledge mm-hmm. let me give you the power Now imagine 2000 shillings. Yes. Every month. Yes. Just pay 2000 bob. Okay? Yes. To Safaricom. Mm-hmm. You get 17 GB of data. I think that's fantastic. You get 1000 minutes talk time. Do people know about this? In a month. Do people know about this? Knowledge is power, doctor. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, right. 2000 SMSs. SMSs. Hmm? Yes. I think I think we need to 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 go into it as well. What's up? Free. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> What's up? Free. Yes. You access WhatsApp free. Wow. So I think that is the of data. You get all those minutes of talk time. Mm-hmm. You get all those number of SMSs and all you do is 2000 shillings per month. That's a Safari Commerce said. Eh? You know, let's consolidate all your issues eh? and put them into one basket and they call it the Safari Com all in one package. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell people how to access it. Dial star 544 hash that star 544 hash it'll bring up an array of uh, choices go to that go monthly one and then follow the prompts right star 544 hash go monthly follow the prompts sign up 2g's a month and you have all this and peace of mind accompanying all that hi knowledge is power knowledge is power now let us also get more power now <laughs> um postpartum hemorrhage yes what is that thank you that is um a problem a very big problem in this country but maybe before even going diving directly into it mm. i would take a step back um i would quote from the bible the the writer of psalms david i think it's psalms 134 verse 19 says that i will praise you o lord because i'm fearfully and wonderfully made I don't know what he had looked at or what he had thought about to come to such a, a conclusion but I'm sure when he looked at what he what had been going on in his life mm-hmm. he came to that conclusion when we talk about PPH that is postpartum hemorrhage first of all we need to understand a little bit about um how the body of a woman behaves mm-hmm. um if you look at the uterus the uterus is a tiny organ basically when uh, it's not carrying a baby um it's not gravid 
It's about 120 grams only. Now, when, when a woman gets pregnant, this small organ grows to accommodate a baby mm. who on average can be anywhere between 3 kilos, 3.5 kilos. It accommodates the fluid that surrounds the baby. It accommodates the placenta and, um, and so on. Mm. Now, it stretches from that 120 grams and it reaches you know several um uh, several i would say several several kilos you know if you are to weigh all these you know elements mm. um, elements together normally when a woman delivers whether through cesarean section or whether vaginal delivery once the baby has been delivered there is what you call the placenta and the placenta is what connects the woman and the baby mm -hmm. through the cord, what you call the umbilical cord. That is where we have an umbilicus, because that is where the cord used, actually, actually connected us uh. to our mothers. Mm -hmm. Now, when uh, this um, um, placenta comes out after delivery, mm -hmm. there is um, a small amount of, um, of bleeding yeah. which occurs, which is absolutely physiological can be anywhere between 100, 150, 200 milliliters. Mm -hmm. uh, that is normal delivery. In, um, um, in a cesarean section, it could be slightly more, 300, 400, maybe even up to 500 milliliters. Mm. That is acceptable. When we talk about postpartum hemorrhage, it is uh, a situation whereby the baby has been born, oh. the placenta sometimes has come out or has not come out uh, completely. Oh and there is bleeding and this bleeding is over and above what we expect it to be so in the normal in the vaginal delivery 200 milliliters you mm. find this woman has bled 600 milliliters sometimes even a thousand she had lost about a liter of a liter of blood wow. um in a cesarean section instead of the 500 mm. mils she has bled also she has lost a liter 1.5 uh, liters or even sometimes more and that is a big problem in this country where does the blood come from thank you remember the placenta yeah and there is the baby. Yep. In order for this baby to get um, nutrition and to get oxygen, it has to pass through the placenta from the mother's circulation, the placenta, the cord to the baby. Yeah. And also some of the waste products also come that way in the reverse, in the reverse direction. Now, remember that um, the uterus has um, uh, vessels. So these vessels is where the blood comes from. Mm. So they have they intertwined and they pass through and they give um, they come where the, the placenta is attached. That is where those vessels are. Now sometimes when a woman delivers, you find that after the placenta has come out, those vessels normally the uterus is supposed to be to contract. And once it contracts, it seals those vessels which were open. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it doesn't happen that way because of different reasons. The reasons can be, for example, uh, if the, the, the womb is overstretched, the mm -hmm. uterus is overstretched. Mm -hmm. And what can cause that overstretching? Number one, you may have, for example, an excessive amount of amniotic fluid, mm -hmm. uh, what you call polyhydramnios, for different reasons. You may have the baby has some problems either with the digestive system or even with the urinary tract system. So you find that circulation is sort of hampered and there's an excessive fluid uh, accumulation in the uh, in the uterus you may find that the baby and this is, is during big. pregnancy during pregnancy during okay. pregnancy you may find that the baby is big what do we mean by big mm. the other time i was on call in in uh, in knh and we had a patient who had had three babies three or four babies and all of them were 4.5 kilos 4.7 kilos and even a six kilo what? she had delivered in the past so that uterus is overstretched such that even the normal mechanism of it contracting mm. is sort of uh, shortchanged and, and it doesn't happen. Mm. So what happens is when it's stretched like that, remember those vessels that I talked about, they are not sealed. So they continue bleeding into, uh, into what they would call the cavity where the baby, where the baby was. Um, you may have, a, a woman may have fibroids, for example. And these fibroids... What are uh, fibroids? What are fibroids? Thank you. Now, a fibroid is basically a growth 
on the on the womb and um, unfortunately 30 to almost 60 percent of women of african origin will have fibroids somewhere in their reproductive the reproductive um, uh, age and um, these fibroids can be very tiny or they can also be very big it can be one fibroid or they can be several of them so for example my friend um, uh, did surgery and wrote an, an article and he said his was 140 meaning he had removed 140 fibroids from a patient really? and managed to save the womb so when these fibroids are there mm. that contracting mechanism also is hampered and even the process of having natural delivery because natural delivery is basically drived by contractions on the uterus so if there's something that is impeding these contractions from happening it will lead to either the, 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 the woman may not um, may not deliver or after delivery the contractions will not happen and the, the vessels will not be sealed this will lead to postpartum hemorrhage how common is it and pronged question yes and in what age group is it common mm -hmm. and what are the other variables that contribute to it thank you now maybe i'll start with uh let me start with the first question how common it is very very common unfortunately we look at what is called maternal mortality rate what does this mean it means that when we look at the number of women who die when they are pregnant during delivery or um, six weeks post delivery mm. and our numbers are not good unfortunately the government um, official figures say that our maternal mortality rates are about 355 women out of every 100,000 women who die or who deliver so if we were to say that um, just for the sake for the sake of discussion yeah. that we have 1 million deliveries in a year it means that 3550 women will die that's that's it's a, huge yes now that is what the government is telling us but when you look at because um, we know by statistics we yes. actually have around that a million deliveries a year. yeah actually it's about 1.6 million okay now uganda has 2 million mm. deliveries now if um when you look at other international organizations, they say that our maternal mortality rates are a lot higher than the 355. What UNICEF is telling us, mm. what uh, UNFPA is telling us, WHO, is actually approximating that our maternal mortality rates are about 550 out of every 100,000 women. Where are they getting their figures from? Um, uh, I think they have their way of um, collecting data because these are NGOs and they have their people in very in different areas, even in very far flung areas where they collect this data. We have a sort of a, a challenge with the data collection um, on our side um, or on the government side because you find that some of these deaths occur either in private facilities, faith-based organizations, or even private facilities, mm. and they are not reported. So we think that there is a gross underreporting of our maternal mortality rates. And this puts Kenya not in a very good light, because when you look at every time we go for, um, for a conference, conference or um, you know, we meet uh, to discuss what is happening in the world mm. in terms of um, uh, maternal health, mm. um, of course, they always say sub-Saharan Africa everything is sub-Saharan Africa. And when you look at maternal mortality rates in sub-Saharan Africa, number one is Southern Sudan, which is about, has about a thousand, is it a thousand two hundred or a thousand six hundred out of every hundred thousand. Chad has, I think, a thousand and sixty-seven. Nigeria has about a thousand and forty-three. Um, um, uh, what, what do you call Central African Republic, about 800 and something. So we are, we are there. But when you look at other countries, of course, there are countries where maternal mortality rates are actually either very low or not there. It's countries like Luxembourg, um, Slovenia, and so on. Poland has a maternal mortality rate of two. Um, Belarus has a maternal mortality of one. Mm. Uh, the US is about 21. When it increased to around 23, there was a huge outcry. And their society actually started to find out what is 
exactly happening. And when they did their, their research, they found out that actually their numbers were increasing in those states whereby Wisconsin, Wyoming, you know, where their, their uh, access to, to rural, um, uh, uh, rural healthcare was also very, very poor. Mm. Yes, the UK, for example, has about 10, 15 and so on. So in European countries, um, the maternal mortality rate is very, very low. And unfortunately, in our African countries, sub-Saharan Africa, the numbers are very, very high. And you're saying that PPH is one of the biggest contributors to maternal mortality in Kenya? It is actually what you call the big five. They are big five, and it's one of the big five, and it's actually number one. Uh, the big five are uh, PPH, that mm -hmm. is postpartum hemorrhage. Then we also have preeclampsia, and preeclampsia is basically um, uh, when blood pressure in a patient um, goes high while she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, when she was not pregnant, the blood pressure was, was okay. Yeah. So that is preeclampsia. That is number two. Number three, we have sepsis as well. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we have uh, post-abortion complications. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, we have obstructed labor as one, as, as, the, as the big five in, in, the, in this part of the world, and especially in, in Kenya. If we look at the, the numbers, so 355 out of 100,000 births, or according to these other agencies, about up to upwards of 400. Correct. So let's, let's pick a figure for purpose of this conversation. What do you want us to do? Let's take 355. That's the official okay. number. Okay. So the 355. So 3,555 out of every million births. Out of every 100,000. Out of. No, no, no. 3,000. 3, out of. Three, 3,000 is out of now a million. A million. Correct. Correct. Yes. Correct. 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 Sorry. And yes, if, correct. if we are having about 1.6 million births a year, yes. that means that we are losing about 4,000 women correct. at childbirth correct. every year. Every year. And the number one contributor is postpartum hemorrhage. Which accounts for about 40 to 45 percent of those figures. And the reasons that you give us that postpartum hemorrhage happens are uterus is overstretched, a big baby. Yes. Uh, what are the reasons? They can also be because of bleeding, because of tears. Okay. The baby has been born, and then in the cervix, because the cervix is basically the entrance into the womb, you find that there are tears which are not recognized. And this, that. These things can be detected by medics they can't. during pregnancy. During pregnancy, during, after delivery, because you're talking about delivery now. If they. Postpartum memory. Yeah. If, if the uterus is overstretched. Yes. Can this be detected before birth? Yes, it can. If the baby is big, can it be detected? Yes, it can. So then we can know that we expect to have a, a situation here and how to handle the situation. What we call risk factors. At, at delivery. Correct. If you have two babies, a woman is carrying two babies yeah. or more, that is also a huge yeah, risk, factor. risk factor. If the patient had um, uh, bleeding, postpartum hemorrhage um, in previous pregnancy, pregnancy, that is a risk factor. If she had preeclampsia, that is also can be a risk factor and so on. So we can actually sort of stratify and sort of um, have a risk factor. This patient has come. This is the first time she has come to the clinic and this is her history. So going forward, there is a high likelihood that this patient is uh, a candidate for postpartum hemorrhage. We, you asked about what age brackets does this also uh, take place. We also see this in younger women. Like now, for example, we have Kenya has one of the highest um, adolescent um, uh, pregnancy rates in the world. And remember when this young lady gets pregnant, it is basically a baby, mm. a child. Carrying a child. And uh, the, the body is not yet accustomed, it's not ready for this. So you find that um, they have a lot of problem delivering naturally. And if, uh, when they deliver, most of the time by cesarean section, mm. they end up having postpartum hemorrhage sometimes even preeclampsia. The older patients as well, all, using older is not a very good term. Well, if you are older, women. you are older. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I am old, so I understand. <laughs> now, it's older, older than teenagers. <laughs> older than teenagers. <laughs> no, I think it's referring to people who are perhaps beyond 40. Beyond 35, five, 35, yes. 36. Okay. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we also see there is a tendency for them also to have uh, these complications. 
Why? Postpartum hemorrhage. Now, it's not very clear, but uh, what we think is that number one, it's quite a number of them uh, have gone through quite a bit of um, a bit of issues. They've tried to get pregnant; it has not worked. And when they do get pregnant, there's a high risk of um, preeclampsia, the pressure increasing. Even when you have sort of stabilized this pressure, and they go to deliver, you find they lose quite a bit of quite a bit of blood as well. And quite a number of them also. Um, undergo IVF treatment because of um, because of age, and um, IVF we know is a risk factor for these women carrying more than one more than one baby, mm. and that also is a risk factor for that. And so you're saying older women who are giving birth for the first time for the first time, and okay. even subsequent. Let's say for example, yeah. she has delivered five times. Yeah. And uh, even if um, even if she the babies were okay in the in the sense that three kilos three point five kilos and so on, we usually uh, we usually stratify that as a risk factor in itself mm. because remember the stretching of the uterus and so on. So what you call grand multiparous, they have delivered more than three four five times. They usually have a um, have a have a tendency of having postpartum hemorrhage. Let's take that break at this point. It's twenty nine minutes to eight. Our health Friday conversation this morning is on postpartum hemorrhage. Why it's number one killer of women in Kenya. Well, scary statistics are showing us that we are losing over 4,000 women every year at the point of giving birth. And the number one cause with 40%, at about 40%, one of the number one cause on this is this postpartum hemorrhage. Dr. Kireki Omanua is the president of the Kenya Obstetrical Gynecological Society. He's here to educate us about this. Of course, now the next thing you want to tell us is how we can avoid, know about the risk factors and how we can reduce these deaths. Let's take this break. We'll be back shortly. Keep it here. This is...